I'm going to briefly describe the idea behind calculating chemical equilibrium using Gibbs minimization. And when this is particularly useful is when we have more than one chemical reaction. The, the advantage is that doing it for multiple reactions is essentially the same as doing it for one reaction. It doesn't get more complicated. We just have more terms. And we don't have to specify what the reactions are. We just have to specify what species are present. And then what we're going to do is calculate the Gibbs free energy. And so let me write down what that is, because this is the important equation that we're dealing with. So N's the total number of moles in our system, and G is the Gibbs free energy per mole in this mixture. And what this is equal to is the sum of the number of moles, so sum over each species, times the partial molar Gibbs free energy. And, and then let's write the partial molar Gibbs free energy. Pause, write down some terms, and let me talk about them. So this change in Gibbs free energy of formation of the species, so we do this for each component, the Gibbs free energy formation at the standard pressure, which is typically one bar, and at the temperature of reaction. So, right, this is at some temperature, not at standard 298, but whatever temperature we're calculating equilibrium. Of course, that's the temperature here, absolute temperature. Gas constant. This is the fugacity of the pure component. So, pure component fugacity. What we're interested in, we're going to do this calculation for ideal gases. That's where it works the best, if you like. Easiest to apply. So pure component at the standard pressure, so ideal gas, then this fugacity is just equal to one bar. And this is the fugacity of that component in the mixture, so it's not at one bar. Well, the fugacity of an ideal gas in a mixture is the mole fraction times the total pressure of the system. So let's point out what we're interested in determining is this, right? This is the number of moles of component I. So at equilibrium, this is being minimized. So that's our criteria for equilibrium. We've minimized this total Gibbs free energy. And we're going to do that by varying the number of moles. Of course, that means we're also varying Y sub I, since this is just equal to number of moles of a given component I over the total number of moles. So we don't have to specify which reactions, but we do have to specify that the number of, say, carbon atoms that we start with, moles of carbon atoms, equals moles of carbon atoms we finish. So if we have, if we have carbon dioxide and we have one mole, and that's our only species containing carbon, we begin, we better have species that contain one mole of carbon we finish. So so we're going to, for each element, we'd have to say the number of moles that, say, come into our reactor of carbon equal the number of moles that leave. And likewise for hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, whatever species are involved in our reaction. So, so this is important. This is a constraint. So when we do this minimization, this is a constraint that we have to take into account. And that's really all we have to do to do Gibbs minimization. And other screencasts will show doing the calculations. And we, we've done it with a spreadsheet where we use solver to, to carry out the minimization.